journey and we are finally heading on to a faraway location in the east of Borneo in Sabah and um, of course Evan will show us where we will go to now. Okay, now we are actually from KK after we drop by in Mount Kinabalu. So now we are heading to Sendakan to go in the eastern side. We are actually from the west move to the east. Our journey move on. Yes, our journey moves on and we will show later from there on because it's hot yeah. here. We just got all the fruit from the market. I'm very happy to got really great fruit now. And this will I this will be making sustaining the next day. So let's head on, not get everything hot in the car. On our way to Sandakan we drove many hours through palm oil plantations. Today almost half of Malaysia's cultivated land consists of palm oil. Sabah and Sarawak have already lost 80% of its forest to logging or clearing. It would be quite impossible avoid seeing this most common of all the bulbuls and one of the best known garden birds here. This yellow vented bulbul that is breakfasting on the resort's feeders papaya is represented in Borneo by the subspecies Gordini. This female can get its beak full of this sweet papaya. And there the colorful male comes hopping in. These flower packers are largely frugivorous, and their natural diet often consists of small figs and berries, especially the ones from the Melastana malabathricum, mistletoe fruits, and Muntingia calabura and nectar. Day in Borneo, it's raining. It won't last for long. I'm prepared. Put my camera in the restaurant to the feeder. The wedding continues. So long trip. We arrived at a very, very pleasant place. Much looking forward to the next days. <laughs> Tasting delicious. Enjoying your meal. That's good. Orange-bellied flower packer is also represented by its own subspecies here in Borneo, and that is called the Diapano. Regarding its 44 splitted species, it's clear that these are highly adaptable species that are able to inhabit various forest types. This cutie black squirrel is the Bornean subspecies Pluto of the Prebo squirrel. These squirrels are squirrels of a moderate size with a bushy tail and a blunt snout that differ from their three colored relatives that occur in Thai, Malaysia, Peninsula and Sumatra by missing the white flanks and tights. There are 10 subspecies in Borneo alone from this beauty, but the Plutos are the only ones existing in Sabah. They live in different forest types, but mainly in tall primary and secondary forest and will also explore beyond forest edges into nearby cultivated areas in search for ripe fruits. For this behavior they are seen as a pest in some palm oil plantations. The diet consists of a huge variety of things like sweet fruits, nuts, seeds, buds, flowers, insects, especially ants, termites and beetles, and bird eggs. I'm not sure if this individual here is managing to capture some little insects which I'm not able to spot, or if this tree bark here is dribbling down some tree sap which the squirrel is licking. Like other squirrels, these squirrels are also important seed dispersers. Brevo squirrels are mainly diurnal and almost exclusively arboreal. Unfortunately, they are heavily hunted in some parts of their range, like Sarawak, for the pet trade market. the end of the 
the canopy walk you have the bristle hair towel which you can see in the back to the left it's a very good spot to maybe also see the amazing bristle hat which haven't been seen by many people at all this is my 39th birthday today and i'm very happy to once again be in the rainforest what a better place could be there to celebrate your birthday this relaxing teddy bear is the second largest existing squirrel species and it's named cream collared giant squirrel Its head and body length is around 38 cm and its tail can reach 44 cm in length. Of course you can expect to find here another subspecies which is called Baramensis which occurs in northeast Borneo and it's the only giant squirrel found in Sabah. It inhabits lower primary forests and seems to be unable to adapt to overlocked secondary forests frequents dipterocarp trees and rarely ventures into plantations. Its diurnal remains mostly in the tree canopies. That's why these canopy walks are so great to be able to explore these forest stories. This squirrel lives in pairs or alone and can utter a loud call when angry or shocked that can be heard from afar. Its natural diet includes forest seeds, leaves, bark, fruit, tree sap, flowers, nuts, insects and bird eggs. While foraging, its long tail might be used as a counterbalance and handle so that it has its hands free to manipulate food. Dipterocarp seeds play a main role in its diet. It often makes tree holes for shelters, but its nest to raise its offspring is a globular arrangement of twigs which it builds in the crowns of tall trees. It may give birth to three baby squirrels, and it's estimated that it may live up to 20 years. Woodpecker. Woodpecker. This squirrel is undergoing a rapid habitat loss by deforestation and is hunted in much of its range by indigenous people with guns or blowpipes to use them as a source of food. Yes. Uh, where are we here exactly? I think this is your dreaming place, what you actually come for, right? Yeah, it looks for like. this kind of uh, insect is making a noise. This is a real rainforest. Actually, cicadas? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a gorgeous place in the planet, I think. And then that Audio. you're coming for, right? Forest. Yes. Which this kind uh, of rainforest is this? This is a tropical rainforest. It's lowland rainforest? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So these places are famous because of the birds. It started for the birds here. This jungle is called Sibilok Virgin Jungle. Sibilok Virgin Jungle, yes. yes. Because it's quite pristine. Yes. So, Evan, which birds might we expect here the next days? Okay, uh, I just tell you about a bit of uh, species what we can hear. Yeah. Mostly, why people want to come uh, the part of Sibilok and RBC to see the most wonder bird they need to see. Actually, it's a Borneo bristle. You only can get on Borneo, yeah, especially course. on this. Very rare uh, endemic yeah. species. Okay, oh. first. Second, actually here they got uh, overall 200 over species, but I cannot get the figure right, so yeah. sorry about that. This is the place make me into birding. Yeah, because yeah. you see so many birds on one spot. And then actually it's six years ago. Mm -hmm. and then. The first bird actually where I will shoot actually is the red bearded bee eater. Red bearded bee eater, yeah. yeah. Oh. Hopefully you can see that. Oh. So that, <laughs> that actually that actually I, I fall in love with that bird. Is that how miracle the bird why so beautiful? As far as I remember you have a good chance to maybe see at like, least three type of hornbill here as well. Yes, they're here actually more easy to spot on actually is the rhinoceros hornbill. Another one actually is a oriental pike hornbill. Pied. Oh, the pied one, yeah. Another one actually is the black hornbill. Black hornbill. Oh, another one. Oh, yeah. Another one before I forget. Actually, is the bushy crested hornbill. Oh, that is white and... Blind, black, gray a little bit. They it has a crest, right? No crest. Oh, no. Oh. So, it's actually mostly yeah. come in a group. Mm? Five to six together. Mm. Uh, so Often, are the hornbills always like group together? Uh, no. Oh. Uh, hornbill actually like the pied. Yeah. Hornbill, the, the black hornbill and the rhinoceros yeah. mostly are... Flowering a pair. 
As a pair, yeah. Yes. That's only, what I've seen in yes. India so far. So only the bushy crested hornbill, they are Those in, in a group. group. Ah, okay. Is it like family group? Or? Yes, yes, okay, a family okay. group. Okay, yeah. interesting. So, and then here also got the lovely pitas. Hopefully mm, we can hear or here. see. Ah. <laughs> and then this is the also most uh, of the uh, people come here wonder to see. Yeah. Pitas are very small birds for the yeah. ones that don't know, which are very, very colorful. Yes, and some yes. people die it's to see brown, them. They especially a, travel to breeding places like this to shoot the pitas. Yeah, you have to see, sit in a hide and wait yeah, for yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how it goes. Let yourself bite by lots of mosquitoes. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You shot them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually... Uh, uh, having a click, we can sometimes sit there about a day or two. Or oh, eager. Shoot. Take mine. Take mine. Take mine. Oh, you put it. You put it. And then we got them. Finally, hornbills. And they're even feeding. I was so thrilled, but my lens was not. It didn't like to focus. You can consider these hornbills being my personal film stars of this part of my Saba episodes and there are lots of reasons which justify this. This is a male black hornbill. Most hornbills within their range are undergoing rapid declines which are mainly derived by massive habitat loss and hunting. You may definitely call hornbills good habitat indicators. They mainly depend on fruit from native tree species which grow very tall and also depend on tall major trees for their nesting. It's our first day in this amazing sepulog forest, but well, the sun is fading. We have half an hour more to a little bit walk around. And even if you don't see birds, most probably you haven't seen any magnificent forest like this before unless you have been on a canopy walk maybe in Costa Rica. This is also the longest canopy walk in Sabah. And uh, I think I will go check the tower if there are some maybe more eagles to see. One we already shot. Let's go. Guys, I'm finally eating one of these amazing durians. This is the smelly fruit, they call it as well, or the king of the fruits, however you want to say, which is not allowed to bring in the hotel. But I was really like, I have to eat it one time. Mm, I couldn't buy a single one. So I got three, already peeled it open. This is part of it. Forget about the smell. Just think about it. Especially when it's warm. It's so fucking delicious. Like, mm, some kind of candy, cookie, creamy, creamy candy. I don't know. Mmm, I love it. Most probably there's only two or three seeds in it. With this nice flesh. Mm. I had the choice to drink beer or eat durian because they told me if you do both, you're gonna die. I don't know why, but um, I think we'll have my durian now and the beer very late. I think I'm not gonna die. Most Europeans can handle it. I love it. First time I eat it, it's great. First time, huh? Mm. Oh, you are very unusual. Mm. You are the exception. 
This is a roosting tree of some of the park's little green pigeons. And there in the back is my beautiful stay. Ooh. Once again in the middle of the jungle, a place where I want to be. Hello. <laughs> You're working till which hour? Until 10.30. 10.30? Yes. Well, have a nice evening. Yes. <laughs> Getting my meal. Mm, this is proper vegetarian food. Ah, I love it. Great, thank you. Good morning. The next crazy bird is coming. <laughs> and I'm filming you. <laughs> could you. Good morning. Could you please introduce yourself? I'm Leo, I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I'm here for a birding trip. I'm an amateur birder. Are you? Very much with, so. With that lens? With that lens, yep. It only looks good. The skills are far from it. Still catching up. <laughs> Which birds are you looking for? No idea. No idea? <laughs> Come on, my dear. <laughs> Whenever you see zebra doves, it might not be clear to you if they are native or introduced species, since they have been introduced to many countries in the eastern and southern hemisphere. They are introduced to Borneo as well and are closely related to the peaceful doves in Australia and the barret doves from Indonesia. They inhabit scrubs, farmland, open fields and lowland areas and are commonly seen in park gardens. Small seeds, especially wheat and grass seeds, serve as their main diet and a variety of grain and small insects are also taken. Trapping for the cage bird industry has led to a big decline in some of their range in Indonesia, but they remain common in other countries. I've already filmed them in the Seychelles, where they purely enchanted me by their cute stripe feathers, their slender small size and their relatively tame behavior. And the next preening pigeon is an eastern spotted dove, which is native to many Southeast Asian countries. It's largely a ground feeding bird and seen singly on pairs, feeding on fallen fruits, grains, seeds, grass seeds and occasionally insects. Males do display flights in breeding season. If you like colorful birds, you can travel the world exploring some of these stunning pigeons and doves, especially in Southeast Asia and South to the South Pacific. So many often shy but colorful pigeon varieties are found that you actually have to fall in love with them, even if you're bored of the city pigeons. These little green pigeons are originally found on the Thai, Malay Peninsula, Sumatra, Java and Borneo. 
They are most common in lowland, where they live in forest parks, gardens and secondary groves up to 400 meter, and some of them have well adapted to human settlements. You may typically see them in small flocks of up to 8 birds, in which they forage on fruits like wild figs. Little is known about their breeding. Who might have thought it? Their sexual dimorphism is well recognizable. Mr. Little Green Pigeon, with its reddish breast and undertail coverts, has taken seat to the right. Eurasian tree sparrows are also enjoying the moderate heat of the rising sun. These highly adopted sparrows are found almost all over the entire Eurasian continent and some parts of the Pacific. The chestnut munia is the most common munia on Borneo and the subspecies that occurs here is the jagori. It's mostly encountered in small flocks feeding on open grassland or ripening paddy fields. How did you sleep? This garden is too beautiful. Wow. What a nice place. Haha. -ha. There's the master of disaster. Buenos dias. Buenos dias, amigo. Good morning. <laughs> Fit as always. Yes, oh no, he already shot something interesting. Okay. He will show me I show you. Oh, something I yes. missed most probably. Yes. Let me see what is that. Oh no way! You already filmed the horn mill! Yeah, tempo! Yeah. Yes! Ooh. You are too early! Yes, I'm yeah, you're early. too good, man! <laughs> Zhang, you're 80 years old and you managed yes. to get the best shots yes. of birds! Yes. Too amazing! Yes. Next one, next one, next one! Ooh. Too good, man! Chicken! Water hen! Chicken! Yeah, yeah, water hen, I know! Chicken! White breasted water hen! Water hen? Yes! You, you mean the water hen? Yes, oh. because the real chicken don't swim in the sea and not in the water and nowhere. Oh. They oh. just don't swim. This morning, you know, tomorrow morning, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good.
we are on our way again to the amazing protected rainforests of RDC, short for Rainforest Discovery Center. 308 bird species are recorded from the Sepilog area alone, inclusive 13 endemics of Borneo. Birding already starts at the park's parking area, where several types of sunbirds visit the flowering bushes here, like the copper-throated sunbird. So far it's considered to be monotypic and if you have a look at its distribution map it's clearly visible that this species prefers coastal regions throughout its range and is found nowhere inland. It is very active feeding on flower nectar but does eat some small arthropods as well. And it's not easy to catch this energy ball on my film for you. Known by its tail by many traveling birders, this is the greater rocket-tailed drongo and the subspecies Brachyphorus, which occurs here in Borneo, is only one of the 13 recognized species and this species is lacking a crest. It's a very noisy bird and just like most drongos is a perfect imitator of many birds of its habitat. One of the existing hypophases suggests that the drongos imitating vocalizations might help them to form mixed species flocks where they sometimes steal insect prey caught or disturbed by other foragers. They are indeed primary insectivorous, but some small vertebrates and nectar are taken occasionally. They live in humid, broadleaf, evergreen and deditious forests up to 800 meter. By their widespread distribution and their distinctive regional variations, they have become the Darwin finches of Asia. They are iconic examples of speciation by isolation and genetic drift. This is an immature bird which is lacking the elongated tail streamers. Good morning guys, this is day two in RDC, in the Sepilog area. And where to go? Birds can be anywhere. <laughs> so here yeah, they give you a great choice. You have the Woodpecker Avenue to the left. You have the Pitta Pass to the right. And eventually you also have a Kingfisher Trail which goes this way. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure but uh, Elvin went this way. And of course I want to see as much as possible of the 17 species of the Woodpeckers here. I uh, have only heard two so far drumming, one calling this morning. Um, yeah, so let's see if we will find some. In any case, it's a very hot day. I'm still glad the mosquitoes don't kill me here. And I hear some castro calling. Good spot here. So far the best spot I've seen in Sava. You like nature? This is one of the places to be. Butterflies in this tall tree forest will regularly visit some of the few spots where sunbeams reach through the foliage to take a short sunbath. It's not even 12 o'clock and I already managed to find and film two woodpecker species for you. At the moment I yet have to find out which species they are, but keep on watching and then I will tell you. This crimson-winged woodpecker is a great eye-catcher, but why didn't it approach closer while taking a sunbath in this shimmering midday sun? Hmm. It's a male of the subspecies Observados, which is one of the three subspecies found here on Borneo. It's defined by being pale or green above and yellow on rump or nape. It occurs in Southeast Asia from Myanmar to Thai, Malay, Peninsula, south to the Sundas and Borneo. It lives in more open forests like edges and clearings of rainforests, coastal scrubs, plantations and gardens near forests, in usually lower elevations but up to 1700 meter on Borneo. 
It is found singly or in pairs and often joins mixed species flocks, especially with Malcoas and Drongos, in search for arboreal ants and termites, mainly in canopies. It breeds in February to May in Borneo and lays two to three eggs. A more commonly seen woodpecker in the Sepilog area is this buff-necked woodpecker. This female is most probably probing for some ants or their eggs in this tree cavity. Ants and termites are its main food. Buff-necked woodpeckers are found in many parts of Southeast Asia, from extreme south of Myanmar to Borneo, Sumatra and its smaller islands. Here we find the nominate form. It mainly occurs in mature lowland evergreen rainforests in subtropical and tropical regions, also peat swamps, heath forests, mangroves and old plantations with thickets, dense understory and rotting timber, occasionally found up to 1225 meter. You may see them feeding singly like here or in small groups, but often in a pair that stays close in contact to each other even when feeding. Surprisingly, it's recorded that they may only lay two eggs. Once again, this bird is also threatened by habitat loss so is listed as near-threatened as well. A chestnut-bellied Malcoa wants to be filmed later. So Evan, we ended up at the next tower. This is the... Rockville Tower. Mm -hmm. So actually among the tower, this is the more shorter one. 50 meters? Yeah, 50 oh, meters okay. like that. Yeah. So we're more in the canopy in between. We're in between the two tallest tower, like Pompeo Tower. Yeah, but I mean like the tree canopy, so we're like yeah. in between the trees. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when the bird web is right, maybe we can also see couples of type of birds, like woodpecker, broadbill, greenleaf bird, those types. This is the more normal bird the surrounding at the uh, this rainforest. Okay, so that would be a good chance to see these birds on this house yeah. in particular, let's yeah, say, yeah. because we're like in the mid-story. Yeah, yeah. I'm sweating. So first day I'm feeling like I did some exercises. This is how I humid actually in the uh, wooden jungle. Yeah, and I really have you, to get you, something to drink. You feel like you're really in the sauna room yeah. or steam bath room or oh, whatever. Yeah, it's like steam bath, yeah. yeah. What about the master of disaster? Still alive? What do you mean? Still alive or resting? Still alive. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go. No problem. No problem. I will follow you. Oh. <laughs> Pretty narrow steps. Ooh. 
this beauty is a black and red broad bill and here in Borneo the subspecies Macrotinctus is represented. And look, it's getting company by its partner that just had catched a marvelous moth. Guys, I just can't tell you how excited I am. I filmed my first pita. <laughs> first ever. Oh man, it's still singing. It's doing this. I would have never found it. But here is Ong. And he found it for us. The black crowned pita is endemic to Saba and commonly heard in forests of the Sepilog region. The male's long clear whistle, which is heard from far away in the forest, is his territorial advertisement. They live in lowland, primary dipterocarp, selectively locked and secondary forest. Once you go up to the tree, yeah. you won't fly away. And you pull on two stick. as well as albicia and old rubber tree plantations up to 300 meter. They prefer dark and damp places, especially ravines beneath dense cover, where they forage by probing the leaf litter and damp soil and sometimes on fallen logs as well in search of largely invertebrate prey such as spiders, ants, cockroaches, beetles and snails, and sometimes fruit seeds are taken as well. They breed from February to July in the driest time of the year and a clutch of two eggs are laid. Yes, I clicked the pitta. Oh, what an amazing bird. Now we'll leave it with rest. And here was Ong, and she was hiding in the forest, calling me from the trail to get me in for the pitta. After a bus comes the dry up. So this yellow bellied bulbul is sorting its feathers again and shakes out the river water. This Bornean subspecies is called Connectance. It inhabits broadleaf evergreen forests and well-developed secondary growth. It's a generalist that eats both fruits and insects. It hunts insects in the understory, waiting for flying insects or disturbed ones by squirrels or tree shrews. My chicken don't like bassing. Hmm. Calling another lifer. Yeah. The honey? Honey's right. Oh. At dawn I found the black hornbills again, preening extensively their feathers. Isn't it marvelous to watch these ancient dinosaurs as being able to clean themselves properly with these large beaks? The female is the smaller and almost entirely black one. Black hornbills are classified as monotypic, but the Bornean birds seem to be a little bit smaller in general. They inhabit lowland primary evergreen forest, usually below 200 meter, and can be found in adjacent gallery forest, swamp forest, tall secondary forest, and selectively logged forest as well. They feed mainly in the lower and mid story, where they prefer to eat larger, lipid rich fruits and figs. 
they are major sea dispersers for the durian species Durio graviolens. But hornbills are not innocent. Like their representatives in Latin America, the toucans, they will also, though fewer, eat some small animals, insects, bird eggs and occasionally bats as well. Bats are catched emerging from the caves at dust and are fed to these hornbills juveniles. Little is known about their breeding habit, but they are laying asexual and do not always breed annually. Two to three eggs may be laid. These hornbills are rarely found in large flocks. They mainly spend their lives in their bounded pairs and will be accompanied by their offsprings for a while. These hornbills are classified as near threatened as well. The spectacled spider hunter also loves tall trees. Another great day in Saba is ending and here in RDC I feel once again I have arrived at my second home, the tropical rainforest. I could most probably just stay here, lie down and listen to the enchanting forest animal sounds until I fall asleep. But back at our resort, some little surprise was waiting for me, as my friend Elvin had only forgotten my birthday for one day. Join me also on my last part from my Bornean trip, and I will still discover some new animal casts for you. Amazing tower. This is a hornbill tower, right? No, it's a broad tower. Okay. <laughs> so it's a healthy, make you more sweat until your underwear is so sometimes it's wet. <laughs> no one wants to know this. <laughs> mm. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy. I don't want to eat it, but most probably you like. What is what is here? What is here? Some cake. <laughs> <laughs> One day too late, but still I got a birthday cake, which is very nice because it's my birthday in the jungle in Borneo. <laughs> David Atamoro said it's one of his favorite places. He was on another place, of course, in Borneo, but I am here at the Sepi Log Forest Edge Rainforest. Forest Edge Resort. Resort. Too many words to remember when you had so much beer. But it's really, really amazing here. We're having a great time. And uh, somehow they didn't forget about me. Uh, I don't know how to kill this cake. It looks too amazing. We had too much food already. 
But uh, I have to end his blow on the candle, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We have yeah, a very no great problem. time here in the rainforest. <laughs> You're welcome. And, You're welcome. Um, enjoy more birds here. Take a wish. My wish. 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 Yeah. I already know. There's <laughs> 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 three. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Sarah. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on. Go ahead. Do you surprise or not? Uh, almost not because you mentioned something, but <laughs> surprise would have been yesterday. <laughs> It's better, it's better than yesterday. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Once like 200 yesterday people already. Yesterday is the first day. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Flying squirrel. Flying squirrel. Ah. <laughs>